everyone welcome to today's video so today we are going to talk about a cement manufacturing plant and the entire process of cement manufacturing extremely important industry when it comes to uh, cement manufacturing because they hire in numbers uh, engineers all around particularly chemical engineers so it's a must go topic if you are uh, go looking for a cement manufacturing unit you should know the manufacturing procedure of cement now this cement manufacturing procedure was once asked by one of our subscribers earlier and recently i received a call from one of my uh, seniors uh, lab seniors and he uh, told me to make a detailed video on cement manufacturing unit so upon request uh, by uh, the senior arijit da i'm going to make a video on the cement manufacturing process so let's go straight away to the process cement manufacturing process is basically of two types now we are going to talk about portland cement manufacturing process so it's a portland cement portland portland cement popularly known as the portland cement manufacturing unit and we are going to draw the process of dry manufacturing that is dry portland cement manufacturing there is a wet process wet grinding wet storing and wet process so dry and wet are the two basic processes of cement manufacturing portland cement manufacturing whereas as the name suggests dry process consists of uh, powderous uh, form or ore form in the dry nature combined together mixed together and then going into the reaction chamber and finally giving out cement to be very brief and wet process on the contrary as the name suggests is a wet process wherein the ore or the dry materials or the dry powder form is being mixed with water to prepare a slurry whereby they are pumped in and pumped out to the furnace or the reactor and to finally get the uh, product that is the clinker and to produce cement from there so we are going to talk about the dry process because it is prevalent in the industry right now it is being uh, used frequently in the cement manufacturing industry that is the dry process the wet process was earlier used because the wet process saves energy in transportation because it, it is easier to pump a, a wet slurry uh, it consumes a lesser amount of energy than to use a conveyor because conveyors do get derailed so mechanical problems are also there they take more amount of time and they take a higher amount of energy as well the conveyor and grinding of dry materials are a little difficult in fact uh, energy consuming than wet so if we consider wet dry versus wet uh, process wet process in the beginning that is uh, in the preparation of the raw material to finally move into the reactor or the furnace or the kiln popularly known as the kiln a wet process consumes lesser amount of energy because whenever water is being mixed with the dry materials that is raw materials it is easier to grind it is easier to prepare the slurry than in dry process which requires a higher amount of energy by ball mill grinding you need to produce fine powderous form of raw material and then you need to transfer it through conveyor into silos so the storage handling and uh, the preparation of the raw material to be fed into the reactor is less energy consuming in case of wet process because whenever water is being mixed the process of preparing the slurry gets easier but it creates separate several problems the wet grinding in finally when it enters the reactor because whenever the wet materials enter the reactor they straight away consume a great amount of energy to first evaporate the amount of water that is present in the slurry because the water in itself doesn't contribute to the reactions at all so you need to evaporate the water in the first part of the kiln and thereafter you are going to uh, move into the reaction uh, process first the water evaporation needs a high amount of energy so if water evaporation consumes a little energy here moreover preheaters cannot be used in wet processes or are not frequently used in wet processes and wet process basically this grinding is replaced by washing mills wherein the raw material is mixed with water to form a slurry and thereafter it is pumped through a slurry react uh, slurry pump into a, a slurry storage tank from where it is directly fed into the reactor so straight away the length of the reactor the length of the furnace the length of the kiln increases because a considerable portion of the uh, kiln will be used to evaporate the water then preheat the uh, material raw material and then in undergo the reaction whereas if you have dry material you can straight away send it through a uh, series of cyclone separator preheater we will come to the use of that and enter the kiln at a high temperature with a pre calcined uh, raw material which is straight away entering the reaction uh, kiln and undergoing the reaction so shorter length of kiln can be there 
less heat requirement will be there in the kiln, uh, lesser length as I have already discussed because already some of the reaction or some of the job has been done in the pre heaters itself. Moreover, you don't need to evaporate the water. So straight away, the energy requirement in this reactor, uh, entire reactor uh, furnace uh, network will be much lesser in case of dry process. So you will have to strike a balance whether you need less energy in the preparation of the raw material or you require less energy in the uh, reaction of the raw material. So dry process gives a uh, energy efficient process in case of the reaction network whereas wet process gives an uh, energy efficient network when it is concerned with the preparation of the raw material. Now these uh, industries predominantly are using dry process nowadays because it's energy more energy efficient because the reactor network requires a much lesser energy in case of dry uh, process and the wet process though it is consuming less energy in the preparation of the raw material but the energy balance will be to strike the overall energy requirement in the dry process is lesser and it is easier to handle so straight away going to the dry process dry process as we know four basic ingredients four basic raw materials for the cement manufacturing industry is used first is limestone CaCO3 lime is CaO but limestone is CaCO3 so CaCO3 lime whenever we talk about calcium ions it is available readily available in the form of limestone that is calcium carbonate CaCO3 then we go on to clay which supplies the aluminium for the cement manufacturing sand which supplies the silicate ions for the uh, cement manufacturing and finally iron ore which supplies the ferrite ions so basically the cement that we finally manufacture we are going to write the components of each of the uh, components of the cement that constitutes the cement powder finally we are going to write the reactions uh, that is the final products of the cement but remember it is ferrite aluminium um, like as calcium calcium aluminium ferrite and silicate so these four basic uh, components are there and that's why we add this four materials as a source of each of the component individually and then we mix the uh, four materials in a ball mill grinder or a ball mill grinding or a tube mill grinder wherein they are churned in they are grounded to fine powderous form and then we uh, move uh, through a conveyor belt wherein it is a covered conveyor belt definitely to uh, avoid the flying off of the um, uh, fine powderous material and then we store it in the silo and from the silo we move into the preheated network now this is the most interesting thing the preparation is done by mostly grinding grinding in steps and definitely uh, to the desirable size moved into a conveyor to a raw material storage silo wherein all the components four basic components uh, that is calcium source of calcium source of aluminium source of silicate ions and finally source of iron ferrite ferrite ions so these four basic sources are combined as a powder form and stored in a raw material storage silo till this the network is clear I guess in the powder form so grinding in series is done ball mill grinding or tube mill grinding is done now we come to the most important network that is the preheater network now when we talk of forming cement powder let us be very clear on this portion we need this all four materials to combine at high temperature and react among themselves to form calcium silicates calcium aluminates and calcium uh, ferrites calcium aluminium ferrites so we understand that calcium is the most important material so limestone is constituting about 80 to 90 percent of the feed into the cement kiln so in the reactor calcium is the main product it reacts with silicates to form calcium silicates it reacts with aluminium to form calcium aluminates and finally it reacts with ferrite ions to form calcium aluminium ferrites and these three particles these three compounds are the basic constituents of the cement that we manufacture along with it some gypsum is mixed at the end of the process we will come to that why gypsum is used and why do we need to at all mix gypsum and uh, produce cement out of it so going into the reactor uh, we understand that the four basic materials are there calcium silica uh, aluminium and ferrite now what we do is very importantly we understand that Calcium carbonate is not what we desire. We desire a lesser carbonated, a decarbonated form of calcium. We desire calcium ions or calcium oxide more popularly. We desire it in the furnace. We need to feed calcium oxide ions. 
calcium carbonate needs to be broken down into calcium ox calcium carbonate needs to be broken down into calcium oxide plus oxygen definitely plus co2 definitely carbon dioxide now we understand that this is an endothermic reaction and is a heat consuming process and we need to give sufficient amount of heat such that the calcium carbonate of the limestone breaks down into calcium oxide and carbon dioxide that is it gets decarbonated this decarbonation process consumes a sufficient amount of heat to provide that quantity of heat we pass through a preheated network now our teacher our professor always used to say <coughs> excuse me uh, always used to say that whenever you enter into a cement industry all you are going to see are tall structures of cyclone separators and something from the far when you see only a tall structure and something rotating now this is the heart of the cement industry this is my furnace this is my reactor which is a rotary kiln rotary kiln my friend very important it is rotating furnace wherein high heat is given about 2700 degree fahrenheit 2700 degree Fahrenheit temperature is being maintained to undergo the reaction and to prepare the material, preheat the material, we use a network of cyclone separators. Now, very important, my friends, what do we do with the cyclone separators? As I have uh, already discussed, this reaction is being undergone in the cyclone separator. About 85 to 90 percent of the calcium carbonate that we store here. That we store here along with clay, along with sand, along with iron ore, the limestone that we store here is being converted into calcium oxide by decarbonating it by giving a sufficient amount of heat so that in the kiln or in the reactor we do not need to give that much amount of heat. We can make a shorter reactor or shorter kiln such that the process is half undergone here and half undergone here. So what we do is we preheat it through a network of cyclone separators wherein hot gas hot gas my friends comes in contact with the raw material preheating the raw material hence converting the raw material limestone into lime plus carbon dioxide now very importantly where do we get the hot gas from the hot gas is nothing but the flue gas that is obtained by burning off of the fuel inside the rotary kiln we feed in the fuel we feed in coal substantially coal substantially diesel oil all of these are carbon sources whichever sources give heat is a carbon source and in the process co2 is being formed carbon dioxide is being formed and some acidic gases may be formed acidic gases may be formed uh, sulfur so hydrogen sulfide may be formed and in the process what happens is these uh, flue gases the flue gases from the kiln itself from the reactor itself whatever gases coming out hot flue gases hot flue gases my friends move into the network of cyclone separators where in three four five cyclone separators are given in series what it does is since this flue gas is hot flue gases carries fines with itself fines of powderous material flying off entrained off with the gas we need to separate it from the hot flue gases so we need cyclone separators or electrostatic precipitators when we use cyclone separators this cyclone separators by the technology itself as we know the function of cyclone separators it is a solid gas separation chamber where the solids fall down the solids fall down and the gas exits through up of the reactor so gases exit and solids by striking the walls of the cyclone separator falls down so cyclone separators a series of cyclone separators is used to arrest the fine powder that is being carried out with the hot flue gas and this hot flue gas is giving energy or giving its heat enough to these raw materials transferred through the silo into the preheater network or pre-calciner network my very importantly uh, my friend this is called cyclone preheaters or pre-calciners pre-calciners why pre-calciners why pre-calciners my friend because this is the calcination process this is a calcination process wherein the limestone is broken down into CaO and CO2 substantially and this is done by the heat provided by the hot gases coming from the flue gases of the rotary kiln or rotary furnace that is your reactor. So it's like almost using the same source to preheat like using the end products to preheat the incoming raw materials. So whenever this reaches this stage a preheater is often used separately to further convert the CaCO3 into CaO plus CO2 and give enough heat such that it reaches a preheated temperature to enter the reactor and once it enters the reactor 
here, my friends, at 2700 degree Fahrenheit, these particles do combine with one another, mixes up with one another, and finally exists. Exist this 500 feet, almost 500 feet is the length of the rotary kiln, and the kiln is tilted down. It's tilted down. So what happens is when it rotates, it combines the materials combine and they move tend to move under the gravitational force downwards. And when it exits this kiln, it is exiting at a high temperature, forming clinkers and falling on the cooling grate. If you can see this, this is the cooling grate. So there undergoes the cooling and clinkers are formed. Now famously, this term you will hear in the uh, cement industry that clinkers are coming out of the kiln. So it's like solidified mass chunks of solidified mass coming out from the exit of the reactor where already calcium silicates, calcium aluminates and calcium aluminum ferrites are formed. So you have substantially and potentially produced your main component for the cement industry. Now as you get the clinkers, you cool down the clinkers. You cool down the clinkers so the clinkers get cooled down, they solidify further. And once they solidify further, you can use this energy uh, that you have basically gathered from the hot clinkers to as a fuel. So you can use this amount of energy as a fuel as well from the cooling grate. If you have a mechanism where you can use this heat of the clinkers as a fuel itself, so you are striking an energy balance and you are utilizing all the heat. Now the cooled down clinkers move in to be mixed with gypsum and grounded into fine powder and this combination with gypsum, this material when it gets converted into a fine powder, it's a grey powder and this is what we call Portland cement and the cement is manufactured. Now finally talking about why gypsum, very important, why gypsum is being mixed with this calcium silicates, aluminates and ferrites, why do we need at all gypsum? Gypsum prevents the setting, the quick setting of cement. What is the use of cement? Cement is basically used as a setting material that is to stick in uh, between two bricks and setting them up as an adhesive. So whenever cement is being mixed with hydrated with water and applied, it acts as a setting material that is it is uh, basically uh, structured, basically it holds on to side bricks and brings them together. And this cement, whenever we mix it with water, it forms a slurry like structure. But if we do not mix in gypsum, this slurry will immediately set. Immediately set. So it solidifies immediately. To prevent the immediate solidification of the hydrated cement, whenever cement is mixed with water, gypsum is being used. Gypsum, what it does, it reacts with the calcium aluminates to form uh, sulfoaluminates. Uh, that is gypsum has CaSO4, so it has sulfates. This sulfates react with the aluminates, calcium aluminates and form uh, potentially, um, what do you call it, uh, sulfoaluminates, which doesn't uh, allow the easy dissolution of the cement in water or doesn't allow the easy setting of cement with water. So you need to mix cement properly and the, the setting time is increased. No easy solidification do occur if we mix gypsum in it. And that's why we mix about 5% gypsum in the incoming clinkers and ground it, further grind it down in the ball mills to produce a fine powder, fine grey like powder and that is transported as cement storage and transported then finally. This is the basic reaction chamber and as we observe that this is the heart of the cement process nothing extraordinary yet beautifully designed to be extraordinary a network of cyclone separators to act as a separation of fine powders as well as as a network of preheaters and finally a reactor furnace which is rotating about two revolutions or three revolutions uh, 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 per minute uh, it is rotating and it is allowing the easy settling down of the clinkers from the bottom and the hot gases, the hot flue gases is basically fine powders has been separated and it is giving its heat to the raw material, preheating the raw material and converting the limestone into lime and CO2 which escapes with the gas. These escapes as exit gas, exit gas which is cooled down and is having no further cement powder entrained with it because it almost all have separated down in series of cyclone separators. So series of cyclone separators are pre-calciners or pre-heaters in the cement industry popularly known. So whenever you enter a cement industry, all you are going to see is a huge network of cyclone separators and uh, if you go close, you will see the rotating cleaning right at the below, rotating and discharging clinkers 
uh, at the bottom. So that is it for the cement manufacturing industry. I hope I made things very clear for the cement manufacturing industry. If you're going for the interview, all the very best. And uh, if you liked it, like it, subscribe to our channel, share it with your friends. Thank you.